So again, I am stuck in rush hour, so seems like a common theme. I'm going to take advantage of this again and break down the charging. So if you get a Tesla Standard Range Plus Model 3, which is what I have, is the charging battery enough? How long does it last? How long does it take to charge it? How much does it cost to charge it? All things we're gonna break down in today's video. Welcome to the channel, my name is Matt. This is Frunk to Trunk. We're gonna go over everything on your brand new or currently ordered Tesla from the front to the back and all of the wonderful accessories in between. So let's just start with what comes with the Tesla. So if you're planning on charging, and we're gonna get into this later in the video, you have to think about how you're going to charge, but what comes with the car just straight out of the box, if you will. So you have a few different adapters and one is called a mobile adapter. So this works on any standard outlet that you might have in your home. The downside, well, the upside is it works anywhere. Now the downside is it's only gonna get you around seven miles maybe per hour in charge. So this charger works well if you have just a normal two-prong outlet in your house. Maybe you don't plan on driving all that frequently, but we'll just keep it short. This does come with the car. It is called the mobile adapter. So let's move on to the next probably more commonly used adapter that does come with the price of your Tesla, and that is the public adapter. Now, I'll put a picture on the screen and a link to what it's actually called. You can order extra ones of these on the Tesla website and actually all the adapters you need are on the Tesla website. So I'm gonna get into the exact one that I have and how many miles it charges per hour. But this public adapter, as they build more and more superchargers or even more general purpose use chargers, so there's some in the parking garages here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They are the public use chargers. They are not Tesla chargers. They are safe for you to use and almost always, or a lot of the times, they're free to use. So this adapter you're going to use. So what you do is you take off your uh, cable from your charging ports on your Tesla and you attach this adapter to the end of your charger and then it goes into your car. The normal public adapters will not fit your Tesla, hence the adapter. What do you need at your house or apartment or wherever you happen to live? This is something that is a huge question of potential Tesla owners. And by the way, if you're a potential Tesla owner, please consider using my link in the description. You get a free 1,000 supercharging miles and that's really crucial if you're someone who's going on road trips, you're gonna be using supercharging or if you're gonna be relying on supercharging. But essentially what you want at your house is to install either a wall connector or a NEMA outlet. So what a NEMA outlet is, is it's that standard higher voltage, higher amp outlet that is meant for appliances like uh, a dryer or a washer, something that's electric that plugs in. So I'll show, I'll show you a picture of what mine looks like and what's the difference between the NEMA adapter and the Tesla branded wall connector. So you might be surprised to find that there is no really performance difference. You're still going to get, and what I get is 35 to 36 miles per hour. Most homes have about a 200 amp box in your house. Now, I'll just keep it short, but you can upgrade this box. You can potentially get more power through your charger. But for the most of us, you wanna get a NEMA adapter, which will allow you to charge anytime you want at around 35 miles an hour. So how much does this cost? So Tesla makes it really simple. You can actually go on their website and I'll put a, a screen recording of how to actually do this, but it's really up to you. I've, I've seen comments in the uh, message boards. You can use essentially anybody that knows how to run electrical to set up, basically it's a dryer outlet, but uh, Tesla calls it the NEMA. I have a 1450. So or you can use a Tesla certified electrician. I think if you own your house or if you would like to market your house as having a Tesla certified um, plug or charger, you might wanna go with the Tesla certified electrician. Also, I don't know what's gonna happen if I have issues with my charger. Uh, Tesla may ask me proof of uh, that I used a Tesla certified electrician. I have no idea. I hope I never have any issues but you search online, they give you based on your city, uh, who you should call to get a certified Tesla electrician. And finally, 
it cost me around $250. So that is all in all the installation cost. Now, again, the wall connector at this time, it's $500. So you have to buy the wall connector and then you have to get it installed. So my electrician, who was a Tesla certified electrician, said, you don't need the wall charger. The NEMA's gonna do the same thing. So right away, you save $500 unless you want the wall connector because it looks pretty cool. So let's move on to the supercharging because you might be relying on supercharging. Uh, maybe you don't have any access to a charger and I've seen YouTube channels where the drivers or the owners of these Teslas are solely relying on supercharging. So, um, and what, if you're gonna go on road trips with your Tesla, you wanna listen to this as well. Basically, if you're gonna drive anywhere, you might need a supercharger as a backup. So listen to this. So the supercharging, in my experience, I've used a supercharger here in Pittsburgh a few times. Um, now it's pretty interesting. Now this obviously is gonna vary from uh, location to location. The one supercharger I used, it jumped up to around 270 miles of charge per hour and then fell. So I think there was something wrong with that charger. I tried another charger at the same location and it shot up well over 300 miles per hour in charge. So if you're going to use a supercharger, how much does it cost? Now you don't wanna run your battery all the way into the ground because that could um, cause your battery lifespan to shorten. That's called battery degradation. So if you're gonna go from around 80 miles, let's say you have 80 miles left all the way up to a full charge. Now on a Tesla standard range plus, which is what I have, that's probably 230 miles for your daily full charge. There's daily and trip, uh, trip charge. 260 is your maximum car charge, or that's called a trip charge for road trips. That's gonna cost you around $7 to maybe $8 again, going from 80 miles to 230 miles. That's what I've seen. Now, I also will go over how much it cost me to charge at my home um, overnight. And that's of course, based on your electric company. I'm gonna pull up real examples from my invoice and show you exactly how much it costs. So now I'm gonna break down an example using my actual bill and how much I get charged per kilowatt hour. So if you do some research on the Tesla Model 3, you'll see that 50 kilowatt hours is typically how much energy you need to charge the car. So based on the variety of ways that my electric company charges me, all in all, it cost me around $7.10 to fuel up my car or charge my car completely. So like I said, I charge my car maybe every two days, sometimes uh, more frequently every day and a half. Uh, simply because I don't want my battery to get overly uh, empty. So taking that into account, my overall cost in a monthly basis is around $56, and that is considering two charges every week and for eight weeks, assuming four weeks in a month. So if you factor in an extra charge each week, that would bring my monthly total to $86 to charge my Tesla Model 3. So it really depends on how much you plan on driving. Now, obviously your costs could go up, they could go down, but the thing to know is that the charger gives you 35 miles charge per hour. So if you go only supercharging, you're gonna probably be paying a little more. Uh, some people just use the adapter, the mobile adapter that gives you seven miles an hour just because they drive it so infrequently. It really depends. So that's an overall breakdown of how much I pay on Tesla. So compared to an ICE vehicle, I actually looked up the average car, the average American fills up around 45 to 55 times a year. And the average car for most people is going to be 12 gallons, give or take for a traditional ICE vehicle. So just on my initial numbers where I did twice a week that I would charge my Tesla, that's instantly a savings of around $1,000 just based on the gas versus charging alone. So if you're filling up your tank 55 times, the savings obviously goes up and you save around $1,300 on the ICE versus Tesla charging or gas cost. So just to put that into comparison, if you do have a 12 gallon tank and gas prices are 309, then you're gonna be spending around $37.08 to fill up your ICE vehicle. 
Whereas the Tesla, I, like I said, based on my electric cost, I charge up and it costs me around $7. Now, obviously that's gonna depend on your car, around the gas prices, but just at a first glance, I mean, a lot of these numbers are estimates, um, but it's a huge savings just on every single time you fill up your car from the Tesla. So if you are considering a Tesla, please consider using that link, the referral link, you get a thousand free supercharging miles. Even if it's not mine, use somebody else's because you get free supercharging and that saves you on the cost. So all in all, a super amazing car. I love driving it and I hope that you enjoyed hearing more about the charging. So again, this is Matt. If you do like this content, make sure to drop a like so I know that you enjoyed it and subscribe to see future videos all about the Tesla from the front to the back and all the amazing accessories in between. And speaking of accessories, make sure to check out the description. They are all one click away, all the accessories that you will need for your Tesla. So again, we will see you in the next video and I can't wait to talk to you then.